When you sit down to meditate, you want to make a determination that you're going to stay here with the breath, that you're going to want to stay with the breath, and then do everything you can do to keep that desire alive and to act on it wisely. In other words, focusing on the causes, what's going to help you stay here. Keep reminding yourself, come back, come back when the mind wanders off. When you focus on the causes, the results will come. If you sit here simply hoping for the results, but without doing the causes, without wanting the causes, it's not going to happen. Because everything is rooted in desire. The problem is we have so many desires, and they pull in so many different directions. This is why we have to make a determination to put some order into our desires. And this holds true not only for meditation sessions, but for life as a whole. You look at a lot of people's lives, and they're like dust motes in the air. When the sun shines through, you see the motes moving back and forth, back and forth, up and down, here and there, not going any place in particular. A lot of people's desires are like that, pulled a little bit here and then a little bit there, and nothing gets accomplished. This is why determination is one of the perfections that leads to awakening. You're trying to put some order to your desires. Desire, decide which ones you're going to go with and which ones you're going to have to put aside. But before you make a determination, you have to stop and think, what do you really want out of life? And how do you go about it? This is why the first quality of a good determination is discernment. Figure out what is a really worthwhile thing to aspire to. And why another quality of a good determination is stilling and peace. In other words, you want to aim at something that, once it's attained, will bring real peace to the mind. This is where you have to bring your heart and your head together. In other words, thinking about what would be worthwhile, but also asking yourself, what do you really want? And how do you train your heart so that it's in line with what you really want? When the Buddha talks about wisdom or discernment, it's a combination of right view and goodwill. Right view is understanding about how cause and effect work, what has to be done in order to gain what effect, but also thinking about true happiness, what would truly make you happy. And what kind of happiness will last? One thing you have to think about is other people's. Because if your happiness runs roughshod over theirs, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to do everything they can to destroy what happiness you're looking for. See, when happiness is harmless, it's in line with the true happiness of everybody else. Fortunately, happiness that comes from within, as when we're meditating, doesn't harm anybody. All the forms of goodness, generosity, virtue, meditation, these are all totally harmless, and they're based on goodwill. With generosity, virtue it's easy to see. When you give to others, they're happy. When you abstain from harming them, they're happy. But especially meditation, getting the mind under control so your greed, aversion, and delusion don't take over, that's a gift not only to yourself but to the people around you. So when you think about the goals you want, it's good to think about looking for a harmless one, a happiness that's harmless. In the search for happiness, and there's nothing wrong with it. Years back, I was asked to give a talk at a college on 
a Buddhist view about happiness. And in the afternoon before I gave the talk, I happened to visit an old college professor of mine who was living in a retirement home. He taught Christian ethics. And he asked me what I was going to be talking about that night, and I said how the pursuit of happiness doesn't need to be hedonistic. He said, yeah, we should go listen to that talk. Because for a lot of people, that's what it is. You look for your happiness, all you think about is what your pleasures are going to be. But the Buddha said that genuine happiness requires that you think about the happiness of others. You think about the consequences of your actions. And as you pursue true happiness, you develop good qualities, discernment, compassion, and purity. These are the qualities of the Buddha, and the qualities that we can develop within ourselves. We have this potential. These are very noble qualities, and some people find it strange that, that they would be developed by taking your search for happiness seriously, but that's precisely how it happens, how they get developed. Seriously, not in the sense of being grim, but seriously in the sense that you really think it through. So the wisdom comes in choosing a good goal, something that really bring, bring peace to the mind. The compassion comes again in choosing a goal that's totally harmless. And then the purity comes in in how you carry out the determination. The Buddha points out two qualities that are especially important. One is truth. You really stick with what you see is right. If it turns out it's not right, then you make adjustments. But this quality of truthfulness is what will carry you through, because you're going to come up a lot with a lot of conflicting desires. And you seem to notice them even more when you start to meditate. Because when you don't have a particular desire in mind, or you allow the mind to wander among its desires, it's like a boat floating in a river, with different currents coming in from different directions. And you're not really sure which current is pushing the boat in which way, because there's nothing solid to compare things with. But when you put down an anchor, and you can see very carefully, okay, now the boat is being pushed to the right, now it's being pushed to the left. In the same way, once you've made up your mind on something that's really worthwhile, there will be pushings coming from different sides. And you have to maintain this quality of truthfulness that's going to require the other quality, which is relinquishment. There are going to be things you have to give up. It's like winning at chess. If you're not willing to lose some of your pieces, you're not going to win. You have to decide which pieces are expendable which things in your life, and things that you will want very much sometimes. But you have to learn how to say no. There's a principle in one of the verses of the, the Dhammapada where the Buddha says, if you see that there's a greater happiness that comes from abandoning a lesser happiness, you're willing to forsake the lesser happiness for the sake of the greater one. There's a translation of the Dhammapada where the translator Give a footnote to this verse, saying this could not possibly be in the meaning of this verse because it seems so obvious. Well, it's obvious in the abstract, but in carrying it through, that requires truthfulness and the re willingness to relinquish what gets in the way of what you really want deep down inside. And those qualities don't necessarily come easily. All too often we want to win at chess and keep all our pieces. But we have to realize if you want something really important in life, there are a lot of things you'll have to say no to. So this quality of truthfulness and relinquishment, that's how you develop your purity. For the Buddha, purity means, one, having pure intentions, and the two, actually carrying them out in a way that's harmless. And his instructions to his son, when the son was seven years old, that this is how you make your actions pure. Before you act, you ask yourself what are the consequences you think will come as a result of these actions. 
that you're planning to do. If you see there's going to be any harm, you don't do it. If you don't foresee any harm, you go ahead. While you're doing the action, you look at the results that are coming up, because sometimes the results come right away. You don't have to wait until your next lifetime. So you stick your finger in a fire, it's not going to hurt in the next lifetime, it's going to hurt now. If you see something coming up right away that's harmful, you stop. Nothing harmful, go ahead with the action until you're done. Then when you're done, you reflect on the long term. And if you see that there was a mistake, they did cause harm, you go and talk it over with someone who's more advanced on the path. Learn from that person's wisdom. So you're not reinventing the Dharma wheel all the time. And then keep on training. If you don't see any harm, take joy in the fact that your practice is advancing. And continue to practice in skillful qualities day and night. That was his instruction to his son. That's how we find purity. In other words, you don't simply go on good intentions. We try to go on skillful intentions, and that means we have to train them. And this is how you train them. By acting on what you think is the best intention, and if it's not good enough, well, you've learned something and your intentions become better. So you try to bring discernment to your choice of a goal. Trying to choose a goal that's going to bring, put the mind at peace. And then you're true in carrying these, these in carrying out what you see as the most discerning path. And this is how you attain what you aspire to. This is how your determination becomes successful. So you look at your life. What do you want out of it? You got to choose. There may be some limitations coming in from past karma, but there's a range of choices. And the wise person wants to find something that's really solid and not be pushed around by random desires, but have a clear sense of priorities and what's really important in life and what's not, and develop the strength, the truthfulness. that allow you to carry through that discernment. And this is how the Buddha came to awakening. This is our every good determination. It manages to succeed.